Hi and welcome. This time around I was going to take a look at just exactly how useful a 3D printer is in the hobbyist machine shop. My original take for a long time was, you know, you make chintzy little things out of plastic. I'm really not a big fan of plastic in general. Uh, so what, it's not going to be a lot of use in the machine shop. Turns out I was pretty wrong and if I'd gotten one years ago I would have been really happy because it solves a whole bunch of problems that uh, can be hard to address otherwise. Uh, personally, I picked up a Bamboo Labs uh, Carbon X1 or something like that. And the reason I chose that 3D printer is because it's sort of plug and play and it's a lot cheaper than the other plug and play style printers like a MakerBot. Uh, it, it was in the $1,500 range for the one I got with the AMS, which allows you to change uh, filaments uh, on the fly up to four with one AMS and you can have up to three AMSs. So you could have 12 different filaments that would change during a print and you wouldn't even have to be there to do it. Uh, I, I chose that you can get a version of the printer for a thousand bucks without the AMS and you know one spool at a time kind of standard 3D printer. The one advantage, well actually there's several advantages to the Bamboo Labs printer. One is it's very fast, very, very, very fast printer. And number two, uh, it just works for the most part. I've had some issues with things popping off the build plate, but that's a normal problem people deal with. Uh, the reality is, is that it mostly just works first time every time. And if something's not right, it's my fault. So that's the kind of printer I wanted because a lot of people, the hobby is the printer. For me, it's a tool and I just wanted it to work. So that's why I chose what I chose. So let's just go over some of the things I've made and let you evaluate for yourself whether this might be right for you. One of the first things I printed was something that came with the Bamboo Labs printer, which was this scraper, which helps you get things off the build plate. One thing that was a big problem, it came with these blades and they were sharp and you don't want sharp. So I took this to my 3M, you know, the 3M Scotch-Brite material basically just took the sharp edge off this so I could scrape things off the build plate without taking chunks of the build plate out. And then, well, before I did that, this thing was sharp and I just 3D printed a cover for it so that I wouldn't accidentally cut myself uh, because that's what I'm prone to do. And I made it really tight. I got it sort of a little bit loose this way. It doesn't fall off on its own, but uh, the other way is still a little bit tight. So when I wear this side out, I can flip it over 360. Just keeps me away from the sharp edges. This scraper is really stiff and actually really handy. This is a sorting tray. Uh, this one's a little warped. That's because I printed it out of carbon fiber. Uh, in hand, and it was the first thing I printed out of the carbon fiber PLA. It actually works really well. Handy is you've got a bunch of small parts in here and you can put them into a bag or the drawer, help you sort them really easily. I printed a second one and it lied flat, but the reason I've got this one in the garage is because my wife took the other one. <laughs> this was a cover for a piece of equipment I was working on and I just laid it out in Fusion 360, which incidentally, if you're not making money, uh, you can get a free license for Fusion 360. I printed this one, I screwed up and accidentally laid it out wrong. These are nozzle adapters for my vacuum cleaner. And they're a really good fit. And the advantage is, if you want to make custom fixtures for your vacuum cleaner, which in a machine shop, that's something you're very likely to need. Uh, this works great. Had some two and a half inch by two and a half inch fence posts here. This was version zero and version two of the adapters. And I wanted caps. That was my first one. It stays, but it's not as tight as I'd like. So I made a version two, changed the angle there. That one is a lot tighter. Oh, still a little loose. I think I may have tweaked that design still. Printed some other ones out here. There to go for a fence in the yard. These are compliant mechanisms which I find really fascinating. Uh, all these are, all the screws here are just rotation points. And basically what happens is this material is spring loaded and that's why they have the funny uh, angles here so that you've got more distance to preload the material. And this is a bi-stable compliant mechanism, meaning it's only stable in one of two positions, either all the way open or all the way closed. And this is to hold brooms. You uh, mount this guy on the wall and you want to pull your broom out. You just pull when you want to put it back. 
you just push in and it slides down and will hold there. Print a couple of those out. In another video, you might have seen my Nakanishi die grinder here. Absolutely one of the most fantastic tools I've ever owned. It really just performed just a treat right out of the box. Absolutely an amazing quality tool, but it came with the stand and I hate it. Uh, it works all right. You can set that, but it's constantly falling over. I really didn't like it much. So I decided to print one. And this guy popped a magnet in the back and I can just mount it on the side of a piece of equipment here on my bench. And it holds the die grinder in place. That's a custom holder that wouldn't have been able to get any other way. Well, you could have possibly made this out of metal, but that would have been a lot of work, a whole lot of work. And it fits just perfectly. And the beauty is since it's not metal, it's not scratching the anodizing off the handle. If you're wondering where it lives, here's my hardness tester, my Rockwell hardness tester, and it's on my bench anyways. And so I just mount this guy right there. Easy to get access to, out of the way. I usually keep it a little lower that so that there's less chance I'd reach over and hit the point on that. And just generally useful. I used to keep all these bits in just a plastic box up here. And it was always a pain to dig through them. So I just laid this guy out that also held a few other bits like uh, countersinks, chamfering bits, scribe, Allen wrench that normally lives up here. Didn't do anything for the file because that was after the thought. Uh, thread angle gauge or alignment gauge. And this is just a prototype, a first prototype version. The beauty is, is as I discover you know, more and better ways to design this, I can just iterate it and print another one, which is pretty awesome. And if you're worried about the plastic, the plastic is to some degree recyclable. They have uh, tools that will let you cut this stuff up and then remelt it to use it again. Uh, I, did, I haven't done that and purchased that yet, but long term, that might be something to look into if I do a lot of this. The doorstop at work was held up by a crappy bent aluminum holder. Instead, I came up with this design that uses two ball bearings and spring steel, and the spring steel presses on the ball bearings, which presses on the aluminum shaft to hold it in place. The old one, you can see right below it, would bend itself out of shape after, I don't know, two or three uses, and then wouldn't hold the door stop anymore, and the door would always stick open. This was another quick solution. Here's another pretty bizarre use. This is the spindle that I was uh, going to make some parts for. And I wanted to see if my, my estimate of the threads was correct. So I had some thread gauges made and I did a loose fit and a machinist fit. Now, ordinarily you'd say 3D printing is nowhere near accurate enough. Just to test this 3D printer, I printed a one inch by one inch by one inch cube. And it was off by no more than two thousandths on any one side, which is absolutely amazing right out of the box. No adjustments at all. That was pretty amazing. I didn't expect that and I don't expect it to repeat like that. And maybe changing materials will also hose that, but uh, uh, with PLA, that's what I got. So I made two gauges, a loose fit and a machinist fit to see if I uh, got the threads right. And the loose fit is true to form. A little bit of slop there. These are 225-8 threads. And then the machinist fit right here goes on smoothly, but only the tiniest slot. So that's another use case. Now, I don't know that I'd recommend this all the time, but if you didn't want to actually cut some threads on the lathe to check something to see if your thread estimate was right, this is uh, reasonably quick. These things printed, I think, in like 20 minutes. So another really useful uh, tool. Another useful thing. Inspired by Inheritance Machining, uh, he made a set of uh, soft jaws for his four jaw chuck. I 3D printed some. So what you're thinking is plastic, that'll never hold up. You squeeze plastic, it's gonna compress and deform. It's not gonna be very useful. But the plastic, all it does is serve to hold the brass bars in place on the jaw face. You can see that the jaw face will meet inside there and basically be pressing between the brass and the jaw face, which is what you normally do. All these do is just hold it in place. And I made these really really snug. Uh, they're going to wear in over time. So I did add a set screw to pull on the back, just like he did. 
uh, to, to hold these guys in place. One problem with PLA that I used to make this is that I've heard that PLA over time will deform. So these were fairly tight, but maybe the PLA is stretching. I heard it creeps. And so maybe I got to make this out of different material. Uh, fortunately, there's a lot of plastics to choose from all the way up to and including like reinforced nylon, which could be a really nice option. This was my first go at this. <clears throat> and I wondered, I left these brass rods in here just to see if this would actually stretch out. Uh, it's still reasonably tight. In any case, uh, there you go. Some 3D printed soft jaws that uh, you can pop off. I could make these looser very easily and then just use the set screws here to hold them on instead. But uh, that'll be really handy because really the job, most of the time, the hardest part with the soft jaws when you're putting little pieces of brass is having them stay in place long enough to tighten the jaws up and this solves that problem. Another variation on this idea that I was just thinking of as, as I was sitting here looking at this, instead of holding round uh, brass rods that are half inch, in diameter, maybe another design would be to hold flat brass stock right across the front, just make a slot that the back part of it will be touching the jaw and the front part is exposed to the part. Uh, that might be a little more challenging, but that's another interesting idea I should pursue. Another really handy use over here at the surface grinder is when you're dressing a wheel, it tends to blow debris mostly towards the, you know, the capturing end of the surface grinder. Not all surface grinders have that piece. Uh, mine fortunately does. However, when you're dressing the wheel, I don't use coolants, so you end up with a cloud of dust, and it goes all over the shop. Now, I do have a grinding side of the shop, well, a little section more, since my shop's so small, uh, but I really don't like clouds of grinding grit going everywhere. So, instead, I built this guy, and this is built in three parts. It has a vacuum port on one side, a cap on the other side, or I could flip the vacuum port over here if I wanted, and then the main body was just, just this folded piece. And there are three magnets on it. I think that's a bit overkill, but it's how I designed it initially. One thing I did need to do is that the plastics obviously melt from in heat and those sparks that come off the surface grinder can be quite hot when you're not dressing. You know, that's not usually so hot, but when you're dressing, when you're using the surface grinder in general and you just want to capture the grit and you don't want to use coolant, then I lined this with aluminum uh, duct tape uh, the whole air conditioning ducts in, and that prevents the plastic from melting when the little hot sparks hit it. So that's a handy use. And it just mounts on the side here, <clears throat> like so, and captures the dust. So I can use it with and without coolant and still capture the dust, prevent the dust from going in the air, because I've noticed uh, when I blow my nose <clears throat> after surface grinding for a while, if I'm doing it dry, you end up with debris uh, that you breathed in, not good. My car, my wife likes bottled water and I hate the plastic waste, but that's her preference. So I did talk her into using these bigger bottles, but in the car, where do you put them? Cause uh, they don't stay. So I 3D printed a couple of these guys. They fit in absolutely perfectly. I used to have a metal one that didn't fit quite as well. And that scuffed up the inside of my cup holder here. Uh, but now, I 3D printed a pair of these guys, and they fit the large bottles perfectly. Another non-machinist related but sort of shop use case for the 3D printer is I had all these different pens, sharpies, pencils, paint markers, uh, spatulas for mixing up epoxy. And they used to be in a bunch of cups on my bench, and that was really annoying. So I 3D printed this four compartment box, and now they're organized nicely. And I know this is not a super complicated use, but it works and I got exactly what I needed. Next up over here on the surface plate, I have two 3D printed boxes. I printed these as chamfered so that they would nest. I think step would have been a better choice. I originally did chamfer because chamfers, you know, are less of an overhang than a step would be. And I thought I could get away without support material, but even the chamfer, not perfect there. Some of the strands printed in empty air, and so they're not supported and they didn't adhere. So not perfect, but I can always print new ones. Granted, uh, buying this is not, I'm uh, making this on a 3D printer is not the cheapest solution. I could go to the store and easily buy an injection molded box that would cost a lot less. Uh, but the advantage is I can make these exactly how I want, when I want. 
Uh, they're also 30% fill, so I'm not using a ton of plastic. You might think there's a ton of plastic. This really isn't. Uh, it's mostly air inside. Uh, if they're not strong enough, you could choose a different material. There's polycarbonate, there's uh, PET, there's also some advanced materials like carbon fiber reinforced nylon, which is very strong. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things you can do with these. And what I've shown you so far in 3D printing is just what I've done in the first month since I've owned the printer. So clearly there's a whole lot more out there I can do. I can imagine fixtures for the lathe and mill for setting up single parts, you know, that you got to do and hold in some way, strange, strange way or another. Um, because you can 3D print things hollow like this, uh, you can make parts that can't be made any other way. Additive uh, manufacturing can make parts that can't be duplicated with subtractive machining. Uh, anything where you can't get a tool in, there's another example. So there's a lot of future possibilities here and I'm really looking forward to it. I think the 3D printer is well worth it and something you might wanna consider looking into. Thanks for watching, hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.